Hi everyone, welcome to this GCSE Higher Revision video. So obviously we're doing the 100 days to go videos and there's 80 days to go into your GCSE exam and today we're doing pie charts. So in this video we're going to look at how to draw pie charts and we're also going to look at how to interpret or read pie charts. Um, it's quite a useful topic. I would highly recommend you make sure you've got all the equipment you need for your maths lessons. So it's a good time now to make sure you've got your protractors. Um, I tend to bring two into the exam and even to lessons. I like to have my 180 degree protractor, the standard one, but I also do like particularly with pie charts and bearings and topics like that. 360 degree protractor can be quite useful. So I got this one off Amazon. Unfortunately, I've got loads more. They give me a pack of 10, so I don't know what I'm gonna do with the rest of them. Um, but, um, but I highly recommend that you get organized and get all that equipment ready. You make sure you bring it to your, all your lessons. So your protractors, your compasses, your pencils, your pens, your uh, calculators, and so on. So make sure you've got those. I'll give you some questions to try yourself. And also in the description below, there's a link to the practice questions. So let's get started. Okay, so in today's video, we're gonna look at pie charts and we're gonna look at how to draw pie charts. And we're also gonna look at how to answer some questions based on pie charts that are drawn for us. So here we've got a table and we've got the 90 rugby fans were asked who they supported and we've got the team England, France, Ireland, Scotland and Wales and we've got the frequencies 20, 5, 15, 25 and 25. So 25 people supported Wales, 15 people supported Ireland. Obviously this data is not right. That should be that should be all 90 and so on. Okay. So we've got this um we've got this table and we're going to draw a pie chart for it. So if I want to draw a pie chart for this information, the first step I would do is add up the frequencies to see how many people there are all together. Now then the question says there's 90 rugby fans. So whenever we add these numbers together we should get that's equal to 90 and 20 plus 5 is 25 plus 15 is 40 plus 25 is equal to 65 plus 25 is equal to 90 so that's fantastic so there's 90 people all together and we've, we've got a pie chart and if you think about a pie chart we've got a full circle of full turns that's 360 degrees so if we take 360 the degrees in a full turn or full circle and we divide that by 90 the number of rugby fans we'll find out how many degrees each rugby fan represents in the pie chart so if we do 360 divided by 90 well 360 divided by 90 is equal to 4 because 90 180 270 360 or if it's a calculator question you could just type that in so that means each rugby fan is worth four degrees or gets four degrees so what we now know is that each rugby fan gets four degrees so if we multiply each of these frequencies by four we can then find the angle of each one of our sectors in our pie chart so we're going to multiply by four 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 and we're going to multiply by four because if we had 20 fans and they get four degrees each all together that'll be 80 degrees so let's now write down angle and let's find the angle for each one of the rugby teams. So 20 multiplied by 4 is equal to 80. So whenever we're drawing the England sector on the pie chart, that's 80 degrees. France, 5 times 4 is equal to 20 degrees. 15 times 4, well, 15 times 4 is equal to 60 degrees. 25 times 4 is equal to 100 degrees. And finally, 25 times 4 is equal to 100 degrees. And we've got all our angles. And we can add those angles up and just check we get 360 degrees. So 100 plus 100 is 200, plus 60 is equal to 260, plus 20 is equal to 280, plus 80 is equal to 360. So that's fantastic. Now we just need to draw a pie chart. So here we've got our circle and our line. Now, typically, whenever you're doing a GCSE question, you've been asked to draw a pie chart. Usually that circle is drawn for you so you don't have to get your compass out and draw but if you were drawing one now you could get your compass out and draw yourself a circle if you wanted to okay and we're going to draw this pie chart so let's start off with england to draw the england sector that's 80 degrees so we're going to go to our pie chart and we're going to draw an 80 degree angle so you're going to get your protractor and we're going to mark on the 80 degree angle so we're going to get our protractor and we're going to put the cross of the protractor on the center of the pie chart so that's exactly there and we're going to line up the line with the zero on it here at the top to the line that's drawn for us on the paper and then what we're going to do is we're going to find our 80 degree angle so we're going to start at zero and we're going to go around this way so we're looking at the angles on the outside here because we're starting at zero and it's on the outside so 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 degrees is there so we're going to do a little dot there and then we're going to take our protractor away and we're going to draw a line going from the center through that dot to the edge of the circle like so and i'm just going to mark in that's an 80 degree angle and in a pie chart question you don't have to put the angle in but you do have to label each sector so that's for the england so that's there the fans to support england okay next next it's france which is 20 degrees so we're going to go to our pie chart we're going to get our protractor and we're going to rotate it so we're going to rotate it and i've just rotated the protractor so that the center of the protractor is still in the center of the pie chart and the zero is on the line we've just drawn. So every time you draw a new line, you put the zero on that new line. So we've drawn that line, we're gonna put the zero on there and we're gonna mark and we're gonna measure 20 degrees. So 10 degrees, 20 degrees, that'll be there. So that's gonna be the sector for the French fans. So let's remove our protractor again. 
And again, I like to put in the angle, which is 20 degrees, and I'm going to say that's for France. So that's the sector for the French fans. Now we've got the Irish fans, and that's a 60 degree angle. Obviously, this information is completely wrong. That should be 360 degrees. Uh, so we're going to mark on our 60 degree angle for our Irish fans. So we're going to rotate our protractor again. So we've got our protractor with the center of the protractor in the center of the pie chart, the zero on the line we've just drawn, and we're going to measure 60 degrees. So 10, 20, 30, 40, all the way around to 60 degrees, which should be there. And now again, we're going to move our protractor and mark on that line. And again, I like to put in what the angle is, that's 60 degrees. Well, that might be quite useful later on if we were to do a question and we might want to look at uh, the fraction of the fans who support Ireland and so on. And that angle is quite useful to have there. And then that's for Ireland. Next, we've got the Scottish fans, which is 100 degrees, and the Welsh fans, who are 100 degrees as well. So let's put those on. So again, we've got the center of the protractor on the center of the pie chart. We've got the zero on the line we've just drawn, and we're going to go around to 100 degrees. Then again, that's on the outside, so 10, 20, 30, 40, all the way around to 90, the right angle, and then another 10, because obviously that's an obtuse angle. So it's going to go past the 90 degrees. And then we're going to move our protractor away a second, and we're going to draw a line there. And that's for the Scottish fans. So I'm going to put in the 100 degree angle that we've just drawn. Again, you don't need to do that. I just like to do it. And I'm going to write Scotland. And then finally, the last sector here is for the Welsh fans, so Wales. And it should be 100 degrees. Let's just measure it and see if we've got it right. And as you can see, that is from zero all the way around to 100 degrees. So that's it. So that's correct. I'm just going to get rid of the protractor a second. Uh, so that is 100 degrees. So that's a 100 degree angle. And that was for Wales. So we've got our pie chart. And we've labeled England, France, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. And I've put the angles on, not that I've needed to, but I've put those on just because I like to put them on. Okay, so that's it. We've drawn our pie chart. And that's it. That's how you draw a pie chart. Okay, just so you can have a bit of practice now, I've got a table and says, show another the colors of the cars in a car park. And we've got red white, silver, black, and blue, and we've got the frequencies. And what I would like you to do now is to work out the size of each of the angles for each one of these. So if you were drawing a pie chart, what would the angle be for red? What would the angle be for white? What would the angle be for silver, black, and blue? And then what I want you to do is, if you have got a protractor and a compass, feel free to draw a circle and to draw the pie chart. Um, alternatively, if you just work out the angles, just to make sure that you're, you can work out the angles. Okay, so to work out the size of each of these angles, I would add them up. Now, the question doesn't say how many cars there were. The rugby fans one did. So here we need to add up the frequencies. So we're going to do 17 plus 20 plus 2 plus 15 plus 6. And I'm going to do that my calculator. And I get that's equal to 60. So the 60 cars in the car park. Now, because of pie chart, 360 degrees, I'm going to do 360 divided by 60. That'll tell us the amount of degrees per car. So 360 divided by 60 is equal to 6. So each car is worth 6 degrees. So each each car is worth six degrees or six degrees per car. So that means if we multiply the frequency, so the 17 red cars, so that's 17 lots of six. So if we do multiply by six, multiply by six, multiply by six, multiply by six, and multiply by six, we'd find the angles and they would be the angles you draw in your pie chart. So let's write it on our column for angle and let's do 17 times six, that's equal to 102 degrees. So hopefully you got that. 20 times six, that's 120 degrees. Two times six is 12 degrees. 15 times six is equal to 90 degrees, I believe. Yep, 90 degrees. And six times six is 36. So that's it. So hopefully you got those angles and we can check them if we do 102 plus 120 plus 12 plus 90 and plus 36, that's equal to 360. And that's what we wanted, so that's fantastic. So we've found the size of each of the angles. And that's it. And feel free to draw that pie chart for some extra practice if you want to do. Alternatively, remember, we've got the practice questions, so you can print those, and in those questions, you'll have the circles drawn for you, so you won't need your compass, you can just use your protractor. We've got the pie chart show information about the results of the school rugby team and the school football team. So this pie chart shows us information about the results of the school rugby team. And this pie chart shows information about the results of the school football team. And we've got five different statements. And we've got to state whether these statements are true, false, or whether we can't tell. And if you want to, feel free to press pause now to give it a thought into whether each of these statements is true, false, or whether you can't tell. Okay, so the first one. The first one says the rugby team and the football team both lost a quarter of their matches. So as you can see, the rugby team did lose a quarter and the football team lost a quarter, so that's true. Okay, next, the rugby team won more matches than they lost. So let's have a look at the rugby team pie chart. And they won, well, they won over a half of them and they lost a quarter, so they did win more than they lost, so that's true as well. And if you got these two right so far, well done. So our next statement, the football team won more matches than the rugby team. So is that true that the football team won more matches than the rugby team? Now, if we have a look at these pie charts, you might just look at it and think, well, the football team has got a bigger sector for win than the rugby team. Well, then you might think, oh, well, then they obviously did win more matches, but we don't know how many matches they played. For instance, the football team could have played, you know, 
40 matches, whereas the rugby team may have played 400 matches. And obviously, if you've got over a half of 400 matches, because that's over a half, that's going to be bigger than whatever this is off the 40 matches. So because we don't know how many matches they play, we can't actually tell who won more matches. So even though the football team won a bigger proportion of the matches than the rugby team, because we don't know how many they played in total, we can't tell if they won more matches. So we cannot tell. Okay, the next statement. The next statement says the rugby team drew a larger proportion of their matches than the football team. So that's a larger proportion. So let's have a look here. The rugby team, well, they almost drew a quarter. It's just under a quarter of their matches. Whereas the football team didn't actually draw many of their matches. So actually the rugby team did draw a larger proportion of their matches. They might not have drawn more matches, but they've drawn a larger proportion. It's got a larger sector. So that's true. And our last statement is that the football team played 10 matches last season. So the football team played 10 matches. Now, one thing that I notice here is that they've actually lost a quarter of them. So they've lost a quarter. And a quarter of 10, where to get a quarter or something, you divide it by two and by two again, you half and half it again. And half of 10 is five, and half it again is 2.5. So that'll be saying that they've lost 2.5 matches. Well, that's not actually possible. So the football team played 10 matches last year. That's false, they can't have played 10 matches last year because they can't lose 2.5 matches and that's it okay so we've looked at pie charts now we're going to look at a bit of a bonus topic and that's two-way tables because two-way tables can sometimes appear in the gcse higher exam as well and um, in terms of the two-way table questions we're not going to answer the ones where it's just really simple where you got a little table and you've got to fill in some missing numbers i'm going to focus on the ones where you're given a bit of a passage and you've got to create a two-way table and where creating a two-way table will really help you answer the question so i'm going to go through one for you and then i'm going to give you one to try yourself alternatively if you've really liked two-way tables and you feel happy to do them feel free to press pause and try both questions so we're told that 100 families book a holiday in July or in August at a travel agents. And some are going to France, some are going to Spain, and the rest are going to Portugal. 59 families are booked to go on holiday in August. 19 of the 35 families are going to France are booked to go in July. 30 families are going to Portugal. 20 families are going to Spain in August. A family has picked a run to win a voucher. Find the probability that this family is booked to go to Portugal in July. Now, there's a lot of information here, and you can see we've got the fact that they're going on holiday in July or in August. So we've got July or in August, so that's the two choices, July or in August. But also there's some more choices, the fact that they can either go to France, Spain, or Portugal. So there's a lot of information here, so creating a two-way table will be really useful for us. And that's it. So I've created a bit of a two-way table where I've written France, Spain, Portugal in total, and we've got July, August in total, and we've got spaces for the values. Now, in terms of this table, if you've written it the other way around, where you had July and August along the top of the columns, and in terms of the rows, you had France, Spain, Portugal in total, and so on, that'd be fine as well. So here's our two-way table, and I've just created this to help us. Now, first of all, we're told there's 100 families, so I'm just going to put 100 in here because there's 100 in total. Now, we're going to use these lines, these lines here, to help us populate the two-way table. So 59 families are booked to go on holiday in August. So in August, there's 59 families in total that are going on holiday in August. 19 of the 35 families going to France are booked to go in July. So there's 35 families going to France. So total going to France, 35 families. And 19 are going in July. So 19 in July. 30 families are going to Portugal. So 30 families are going to Portugal. And 20 families are going to Spain in August. So Spain, August, is 20 going to Spain in August. And we're asked to find out the probability that the families go into Portugal in July. So we're really looking for this number here. If we can work out this number, we can find out the probability. So we want this box here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work out whatever boxes I can to begin with. So here, if there's 100 families in total and 59 are going in August, that means the rest of them, which would be 41, are going in July. In terms of Spain here, now 30 are going to Portugal and 35 are going to France, that's 65. So that means the 35 are going to Spain because 35 plus 35 plus 30 is equal to 100. If there's 35 families going to Spain and 20 are going in August, the rest must be going in July, so that'll be 15. Now at this point here, we can actually just work out the number we need, but if you had worked out this number here, it would be 16, and 59 take away 36 would be 23. And then in terms of this number here, well, we can work it out the fact that there's 30 families going to Portugal, so that means that seven must be going to Portugal in July. Or turn to if you looked at this row, you had that 19 plus 15 is equal to 34, and then plus another seven would be 41, so that number seven. Now the question said a family's picked at random, so there's 100 families, and a family's picked at random, the seven that go to Portugal in July, so that means it's gonna be seven, out of 100, it was seven one hundredths, and that's it. So the probability that family picked at random would be a family that goes to Portugal in July would be seven out of the hundred, so seven hundredths, and that's it. Okay, so we've looked at one question. Now here's one for you to try, so feel free to pause the video now and to try this question. Okay, so the question says there's 147 students in year 11 at a school. Fantastic. And each student studies one language, either French, Spanish, German, or Welsh. 
and that 41 out of the 50 students studying Welsh are going on a trip, that out of the 37 students that study French, there's three more that are not going on the trip than are going on the trip, four out of the 15 students studying Spanish are not going on the trip, and that twice as many students studying German are not going on the trip than are going on the trip. How many year 11 students are going on the trip? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a two-way table, so let's do that. Okay, so I've created a two-way table where we've got French, Spanish, German, Welsh in total, and we've got trip and no trip in total, because there's a lot of information here, so I thought a two-way table would be really useful for us. And we've got there's 147 students in total, so 147 students, and that each student studies one language, French, Spanish, German, or Welsh, so all of these totals will add together to be 147. 41 out of the 50 students studying Welsh are going on the trip. So Welsh, there's 50 students studying Welsh, and that 41 are going on the trip. And the rest, there must be nine that aren't, but we'll do that later because I like to just put in the information we're given to begin with. Out of the 37 students that study French, so there's 37 that study French, there's three more that are not going on the trip than are going on the trip. So this number here, there's three more that are not going on the trip than are going on the trip. So this number is three more than this number. Now you can use just trial and improvement and work that out. So for instance, I know this number is then going to be 20 and this number is going to be 17 because 20 plus 17 add together to be 37 and 20 is three more than 17. So that's one way you could do it. But if you couldn't spot that or if it's a bit harder, what you could do is you could actually say, well, so if there's three more that are not going on the trip than are going on the trip, let's call the ones that are going X. The ones that are not going will be X plus plus three because that's three more you could add them together so that'd be 2x plus 3 equals 37 and that's a little equation where you could take away 3 and take away 3 you'd get 2x equals 34 divide by 2 and divide by 2 and you get that x equals 17 so x equals 17 and that's three more so that'd be 20 okay so we've used that bit of information okay next we're told that four of the 15 students studying spanish are not going on the trip so four of the 15 to so 15 study spanish and four are not going on the trip and then we're told twice as many students studying german are not going on the trip than are. So in other words, this number is going to be double this number. Twice as many are not going on the trip than are. Okay, let's fill in some of the missing numbers here. So let's start off with the Welsh students. If 41 are going on the trip, that means that 9 are not going on the trip. The Spanish students, or the study of students studying Spanish, well, if 4 are not going on the trip, that means that 11 are going on the trip. We know the grand total is equal to 147, so we can work out this number here. Because that means that 37 plus 15 plus 50, if we add these numbers up, so that's 102. So then we do 147, take away 102, and that would be equal to 45. So that means it's 45 students studying German. Now we're told that twice as many are not going on the trip than are. And that's quite nice, because if there's 45 students studying German, and we know that twice as many are not going on the trip than are, that means that this number is going to be double this number, so this would have to be 30, and this would have to be 15. And you can just look at that and work that out. But if you weren't sure of that, again, you can make a little equation. You could call this one x, and you could call this one 2x, because this number is double this number. So it means that x plus 2x would be equal to 45. x plus 2x is 3x, so we get 3x equals 45. Divide by 3 and divide by 3, and we get that x is equal to 15. So it means x equal to 15, so it means that this is 15, and this is double that, which would be 30. And the question says how many year 11 students are going on the trip, so we want to know this number here, so we can just add up this row. So 84 are going on the trip, and so the question says how many year 11 students are going on the trip, the answer would be 84. If you ask how many were not going on the trip, you'd work out this number, so you'd do 147, take away 84. And if you do that, you get that's equal to 63. And that's it. So in this video, we've looked at pie charts, how to draw pie charts. We've looked at how to answer some questions involving reading pie charts. And also we've looked at two-way tables. And that's it. So I really hope you find this video useful. If you have found it useful, please like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And just to repeat, make sure you've got all your equipment for all your lessons going forward in class, because you never know when you're maybe going to do past papers and so on at this stage. So it's important that you, if you've got a protractor, like this one actually, here in my hand, it's not necessarily my favourite protractor, so I'll make sure that I bring my favourite protractor into lessons and so on. So make sure you're organised with all that equipment. And keep up the good work. You've got 80 days to go to your GCSE exams. The fact that you're watching these videos is absolutely fantastic. And keep it up. Cheers. Bye.